Hey, welcome back. It's Nolan Mathias from Mortgage360, and today I want to set the record straight on HSBC and their mortgages because, quite honestly, it is absolutely appalling how many people in the industry are talking negatively right now about HSBC, spreading rumors like they have a bona fide sale clause and a whole bunch of other crap. It's absolutely untrue. And today, what I want to do is I want to dispel the myths, tell you what you really need to watch out for in an HSBC mortgage, and make sure that you get transparent, honest, and clear information, just like we've always committed to you on this channel and like we've always committed to you with Mortgage360. So before we get into it though, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's set the record straight on HSBC and tell you everything that you need to know about them, starting with who they actually are and what they're all about. So HSBC Canada, like every other bank in Canada, is a chartered bank, and therefore they have to follow the same Canadian rules that come along with being a chartered bank, and Canada's rules with respect to banking are some of the most stringent in the world. Now, from a size perspective in Canada, HSBC is the seventh largest bank in Canada. However, their holding company, the company that is their parent company, is the sixth largest bank in the world and the largest bank in Europe. And while HSBC stands for the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation, they're actually located in London, England, at least their head office is. In fact, they're located at 8 Canada Square, which is ironic because we're talking about HSBC Canada today. Now, for a bank like HSBC Canada, there's both good things and bad things that come along with being associated with the HSBC name. Most notably was the Netflix series Dirty Money, which profiled them in 2018 about their 2012 dealings with the Sinaloa cartel. Notably, they were accused of trafficking money for one of the biggest drug cartels in the world, and as a result, ended up paying a $1.9 billion fine in the US. Now, crazily enough, $1.9 billion, even though it seems like a lot of money, was effectively a speeding ticket for HSBC globally because it amounted for about five weeks worth of profits. And while a lot of the competitors of HSBC and a lot of brokers are talking about the profile in dirty money, I think it's an unfair characterization to label HSBC Canada as a dirty bank. In fact, I think they're anything but. And it makes sense that a global bank, one that has branches throughout the world, would be targeted by drug cartels. Because quite honestly, if you're a drug cartel and you want to move money around the world, are you going to do it with local banks and try to get the money moved from bank to bank to bank? or are you going to pick a bank where you can move money from country to country more easily? So I don't think HSBC is necessarily a bad bank, but they may have found a few bad actors and who knows, when drug cartels come and they bring photos of your family and say, here's what's going to happen if you don't do what we ask, well, would you blame necessarily certain bankers in certain countries for doing things that they normally wouldn't do or that a bank normally wouldn't do? So the characterization of HSBC Canada as a bad bank is absolute garbage. I don't think there is such a thing as a deliberately bad or corrupt bank in Canada. Any sort of recommendation based on that being a fact is absolute bullshit. And it certainly shouldn't be a consideration when you go to get your mortgage. Now, what are the things you should consider when you're getting a mortgage from HSBC? Well, let's talk about that and let's be clear, honest, and transparent about it. So the first thing you need to consider when getting a mortgage from HSBC or any big bank in Canada is the fact that they have big bank practices, which for a mortgage borrower means big penalties on five-year fixed mortgages or any sort of fixed mortgage for that matter. Now, in HSBC's case, their variable rate products are among the best in the industry. They're actually great products, but just like any other major bank, their fixed rate mortgages are going to have penalties that can be quite cumbersome, especially if you don't expect them in three to four years when you go to sell your property. And keep in mind that stat that 60% of Canadians don't make it to the end of their term when it comes to mortgages. So four out of 10 will actually get to renewal date and not have to worry about a penalty, but the other six are eventually going to be faced with some sort of a penalty. And that's an important consideration, especially when you look at things like variable rate mortgages that are promoted at under 1% that are basically being promoted to first time home buyers and people who have less than 20% down and therefore have a high likelihood of being converted into fixed rate mortgages down the road and ultimately into mortgages that have high penalties. Now, the second thing you need to consider when you look at HSBC as a lender is that as the seventh biggest bank in Canada, they have a much smaller branch and ATM network than most other banks, which can make things like getting help, getting information, 
harder to do. It makes it a lot harder to walk into a branch and make changes to your mortgages because there are less of them. And when you get there, they may very well be busier than what a normal branch at a BMO or an RBC or a Scotia Bank would be. They quite simply aren't going to have the same resources that the other big banks have. Now, the one thing I do like about HSBC is that they do credit you back on ATM charges when you make withdrawals or deposits at other banks. But again, much smaller network of ATMs and branches means less resources and ultimately could mean not as good of service. Only time will tell on that one. Now, the third thing you need to realize is that as an international bank, there is the risk that they could end up leaving our market at some point. The most recent international bank that has done this has been ING Direct. They left after the 2008 financial crisis, not because they weren't profitable, but because they were highly profitable. They ended up selling their assets to Scotiabank and did so so that they could take the sale proceeds back to their homeland and basically support the operations there when everything was really, really tough in Europe. Other banks that have left the Canadian market are Wells Fargo, who at the time was the second biggest bank in the world, and Macquarie Financial, a very big Australian bank that left for similar reasons to ING Direct. Now, I'm not saying that we run the risk of HSBC leaving the Canadian market, but what I am saying is that when you consider its mortgages apples to apples to a Canadian bank, that's one thing that you have to consider, and it is a potential risk factor. And what that means for you is if they sell off their assets to another bank, you could end up with a mortgage lender that is substantially different in practices and policies than the one that you originally signed up with. This is what happened to ING Direct clients when they started getting their tangerine mortgage renewal statements that were at substantially higher interest rates than what ING ever offered. The fourth thing to consider is that HSBC definitely wants to be a bigger Canadian bank, which means that they are prone to doing big promotions. They do this on a regular basis. We often see it in the mortgage world. And what is happening right now in the middle of their 0.99% variable rate promotion is that they are absolutely getting swamped and their resources are running thin. And what that means for existing HSBC borrowers is that if you are somebody who needs a deferral right now or needs to make a change to your mortgage or needs to call in and get help, well, because the resources are being stretched so thin, it's harder to get service from HSBC. So it's something that you definitely need to consider from the aspect of, do you wanna be caught in the middle of December having to wait three to five hours on the phone because they've absolutely swamped their systems with a promotional rate that's being advertised all over Canada and is picking up massive amounts of media attention. Now, as far as things that are simply not true about HSBC and their mortgages, and this is something that we need to get out there because there's a lot of rumors and a lot of bullshit going around about what's going on with HSBC's mortgage, what their features are and everything else, because basically brokers and banks are trying to compete and don't have anything else to say than what they would normally say about no frills mortgages that are offered elsewhere. Well, let's put that all to rest because HSBC's mortgages are not no frills mortgages. Their 0.99% offer that they have right now is actually a great variable rate as long as you don't lock it in. And it is also a mortgage that is fully open after three years, which is a feature that most variable rate mortgages don't have in Canada. Now, some brokers are running around, some banks are running around saying it has a bona fide sale clause or no refinance clause that prevents you from being able to leave. That is simply not true. The features on their mortgages are the same, if not better, than a lot of other banks. Again, the only thing you really need to watch out for is that big bank penalty that comes with fixed rate mortgages at a big bank. And as long as you can avoid that, an HSBC mortgage is as good as any mortgage in the industry. That of course is assuming that you can actually get in touch with them, get your mortgage approved and get it closed in time for your potential purchase or your refinance. Now, considering everything that I just talked about, HSBC likely gets a far worse rap than they deserve. They certainly aren't as bad of an entity as their competitors and Netflix would like to lead you to believe, but they are a fairly small bank with a massive promotion that is getting them the sorts of volumes that only big banks dream of, which is likely going to increase their mortgage book substantially and make them a bank that isn't going to leave Canada anytime soon. So I think it's safe to say, as long as you can get a mortgage with HSBC, as long as you can get things done in a reasonable amount of time, and as long as you understand the things that come along with a fixed rate mortgage with a big bank, they're probably going to be an okay lender. You probably aren't going to get the same level of advice that you would get from a great mortgage professional, because after all, they are a bank with limited resources, but 
you'll get a mortgage that is comparable to whatever else is out there and has similar features to what all of the other banks offer. And while I'm not advocating that anybody go directly to their bank in order to get a mortgage, because quite honestly, it is better to have somebody like a broker in between you and the bank in order to advocate on your behalf, much like a professional athlete has an agent to be the go-between. But if you are going to go to HSBC to get a mortgage, do understand that a lot of the rumors, a lot of the things people are saying about them simply aren't true. And while they aren't the absolute best mortgage product in the industry, they don't have the necessarily the best lock-in rates that the best mortgages in Canada have. They do have a decent product as long as it's a variable rate and it is something that you can be comfortable with as long as you know exactly what you're getting into. So don't believe everything you see on Netflix. If you found this information useful, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And please, it does me a huge favor if you hit the like button so more people like you see this video. Thanks so much. We'll see you on the next one.